All right, thanks for joining everybody. Uh, this is Scott Sapanek. We're back at you. We're going to talk about today was a fantastic day for yours truly. Actually, got a compliment on this book, and it's how to cure racism in 15 minutes or less, and why this message needs to go viral. Now, nobody wants to hear the message, but we're just going to state emphatically that God is not a racist. Let's repeat that. God is not a racist. That ship sailed at the cross of Christ. We are now in the era where it went from the physical to the spiritual. We have said this a thousand different permutations before. That's exactly what has happened with the so-called church, which is a called out assembly. It's not a proper noun. We're talking about Matthew 16, 18. It is a called out assembly. And that's what we're talking about. Is that called out assembly? You know, they followed the lamb whithersoever he goeth. And it says also in Revelation 12, 11, that they overcame him, we're talking about the dragon, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So we're talking about things that go way beyond the, the how can we put it, normality, the normalness, the normality of everyday life. Because people don't realize these things. That's why we have on the cover. This book was, we were inspired, I was inspired to write this book back in 2016. And virtually no one wants to read it. I have given away this book a few hundred times and probably a handful, only a handful of people have ever come back and said, I like the book. I like the ideas that are presented. I like the concepts that are so simplified. It's not a, it's not a, a, a heavy read, as you can see. It's more like a booklet. But we wanted, I say this in the collective sense, we, there's a few other ones, and we also explain, we're going to read, start reading the book right now. There's also a few other ones that pertain to the 144,000 and what the 144,000 means. We're going to explain that. But anyway, that's kind of a prelude, a lead in. I went to the gym today, saw a good buddy who I gave a book to, and he walked up to me and he standing right in front and he says, I'm reading your book. I like what I'm reading. Really? Because that is a such a rare occurrence going back to 2016. Next year will be 2025. It's almost been well, it'll, it'll be going on nine years since this book is out. Now on the cover, it shows how to cure racism in 15 minutes or less and why this book needs to go viral by yours truly. It shows the dichotomy between a couple of races involved. This is why God is not a racist. This is why anybody, this is all about, this book is all about spiritual identity. Spiritual identity as in born again Israel. Born again Israel and the identity that comes along with that. So let's go into it. And we're going to pick it up. Dedication will read from cover to cover. To all my friends across the globe, thank you for your dedication, searching, and love for the truth. Because, you know, it says in the Word that those who worship God must do so in spirit and in truth. The world is strength in numbers. We are strength in spirit. So there we go. Table of contents. Preface. Introduction. Goes from chapter 1, what matters most. Chapter 2, who really is the bad guy. Chapter 3, the global metaphoric transfer. And yes, there is one going on. Chapter 4, Why This Matters in Sense of Urgency. Chapter 5, The Conquering Thesis. Chapter 6, A Global Roadmap to Real Change. And Chapter 7, Creating Your Own Headlines. How to go out, even though we are only onesies and twosies, going out there and making a difference. You know who gets sealed during the tribulation? Are the 144,000. So these are things that we need to know. We need to know now. Okay, let's go into the preface. And we'll try to keep these cut down time-wise so that we can take each chapter uh, by itself. Preface, here we go. A child was noticed the other day as they walked the hurried streets of this populated city. Closely clutching onto the benevolent hand of their parent, they strolled the crisp air of an early summer morn. Unaware of any malignant force were they that a sparkle glinted from their eyes to the newness of life. Unencumbered, as it were, to the beauty of it all. It was this scene, I actually saw this scene many years ago, that got this author to marvel and appreciate their childlike faith so pure, pristine, and young. How can you describe something that has as its roots no chronological foundation or measurement of time, but just the steady swirl of discovering what lies just up ahead? No past, no present with a future, or just present with a future, devoid of worries, or at least to them, they just trust with a childlike faith that their future is secure. They know not the further, the finer aspects of argument, greed, hatred, or lust, in the tiny bodies they possess. They just want someone to love them, to hold them, and to appreciate them with care. Walking down that street becomes an adventure. 
fraught with discovery when a dog or cat crosses their path where a bird chirps their presence in a nearby tree. But alas, they grow older when the ravages of time start to take hold. Their faith is battered and stressed and stretched to the limit. Pain starts to set in with the failings that may have caused them to stumble or cry out or beg for help. They may become lonely or tired or hurt in the mangled street that they call life, trying to get to work or find a job to keep their family alive. As they walk down that brutal road and hold the hand of their young son or daughter that they have replaced, they look up at the sky and say, and say with a prayer, please God, don't let this happen to them. A parent's prayer. How do you cure racism in 15 minutes or less before I die? At least one person, all it takes is one person to get out there and spread the remnant message. A remnant of who? A remnant of Israel. Born again Israel. And why? How to cure racism should go viral. This book is about you, us, me, no matter where we might be. We live in the chronology of time, and it's hard sometimes to step away from the concept of time, away from the general fear of loss that plagues mankind, to put ourselves in a position for the opportune moment of Kairos. If you understand what that means, it's called the Kairos time frame. It's Greek. It means opportune time, which is really a moment of decision, opportunity, and action. That's why we say all the time, get yourself in a position to be supernaturally chosen, blessed, and favored. If the world is a great big marketplace of physical products that always change, then the opportune moment of Kairos is really not so much behind the fleeting reality that chronology presents, but is really in front of our known reality where opportunity presents itself. But who will listen and seize the moment? Who? Not very many people. Unfortunately, not very many. And that is why it's important to make that connection and discover the blessing that goes beyond the world of words to where we really live in the soul before I die. Many highways will be traveled and many faces seen, but the most important thing is what exactly did we do with the time we spent here in between before I die. Someone cared to put some of those words down as a song and a record of sorts to sell on the highways and byways because that's what we're, we're really selling is spiritual wares. It's not the commerce, but the spiritual wares that we present so that other people can make an educated buying decision. It's got to be between them and God. Not for fame or riches, but of a testament of, a, but of, a testament of what they really believe to be true. And this is our testimony. The few of us. Born again Israel. It went from the physicality, that physicality, or that physical nature of the chosen people race died. That ship left, never coming back. And it went into the spiritual. We're going to read later on in this tiny book. We're going to read how, who is the real Jew? And we should know that that question is answered in Romans 2, 28 and 29. Who is a real Jew? That's the question we need to answer. And that's the answer that we need to see. Because God is, again, I'll leave you with this thought. God is not a racist. Any race can become part of born again Israel. Any race. Those floodgates have been opened. And the fact that we're all equal, that anybody, any race can become part of born again Israel. I love you guys. We'll talk soon.